Susan, it's so great to finally be able to get together again. Oh, it sure is. And I really appreciate you picking up the bill. I'm happy to. I've got the extra cash. Since we've all been driving so much more again, I've been using GetUpside, the free gas app that pays you cash back for every gallon of gas you buy. Wait a minute. Are you saying you actually get paid cash when you buy gas with the GetUpside app? Yes, up to 25 cents a gallon. Cash back every time I buy gas. Does that actually add up to anything? Some months I make 200 to 300 bucks. <laughs> Wow, that's serious extra cash. I'm downloading the free GetUpside app now. Download the free GetUpside app now in the App Store or Google Play to save up to 25 cents a gallon when you buy gas. Use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's up to 50 cents a gallon on your next fill-up. You can cash out anytime to PayPal or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Just download the free GetUpside app and use promo code FILL for a 25 cents a gallon bonus on your first tank. That's code FILL. Hey, and welcome to the Hypothalamic Amenorrhea Podcast, an adulting advice podcast production. I'm Danny Sheriff, and this is the place to come if you care about getting your period regularly. This podcast aims to educate, inform, and keep you motivated on your period and HA recovery track. Let's dive in. And guys, please remember that I am not a doctor and nothing on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always seek the advice of your physician. Hey ladies, it is that time of the month, the new moon, that is the opening of the HA Society that opens once a month for just a few days. So it's open right now and it closes on the 15th, which is Friday. We have a community call tomorrow and on Saturday, so you'll be able to jump right on in as well as binge all of the early release podcast episodes that are in there. You can re-listen to all of the community coaching calls, which is kind of like a whole bunch of getting a whole bunch of bonus episodes of, of group conversations with the women in the membership. Um, also, since we've been going for a while now, we've built up some cool content and past events and presentations. So we've created a little onboarding course, if you will, like just some units to take you through when you first come in to really get you up to speed on HA right? We have the first ones on like navigating the medical field when you have HA. And then the second one is about HA. Like Holly Dunn does this amazing presentation where she dives really deep into HA more than any podcast, you know, you've listened to has before. And she takes you through this awesome presentation about its evolutions and she gives you her advice on moving forward with recovery. Then we have some really cool sessions with clinical therapist Molly Burney and a cool session with um, Meg Dole. Everyone loves Meg Dole. And just some others like tracking your cycle when you have HA, getting started with the fertility awareness method. So we've created that to make getting started in your recovery journey really, really simple. And then you can join in with the conversation and make your new bestest friends. I'm so excited to see you in there. So if you want to join, come on in. The link is in the show notes or just go to thehasociety.com and click join now and we'll see you in there. But hurry, it closes on the 15th. This episode's sponsor is Green Chef, and I'm pumped to tell you why we chose Green Chef and how they're a great option if you're trying to recover from HA and you're wondering, what do I eat? So Green Chef is the first USDA certified organic meal kit company, and they make eating well super easy and it's affordable with plans that fit every lifestyle, including you guys just hear me out here the reason we reached out to green chef to see if they would work with us is because two of the most common hang-ups or concerns that i get from women when they're trying to ensure that they're eating enough during this time is i don't really enjoy or even know how to cook and tend to eat only the same few things over and over again and concern that eating enough food in the day just is challenging And one of the big reasons that I really wanted to go with Green Chef is because it's one thing for you to go and get all of your meals from McDonald's to ensure that you're hitting your calories. But as a community, we really don't talk enough about the quality and nutrient density of our food while we're trying to get our periods back. So I have been using the meal prep kits and I would actually consider myself someone who does know how to cook. But as I was using these, I thought, 
yeah, this is exactly what my girls who say they can't cook need. Because here's the thing. Each recipe comes fully kitted out with the exact ingredients that you need. With super simple recipes to follow, like, trust me. Usually if something has a recipe and it's like more than three steps, I cannot be bothered because I know it's just more work to follow and I rather go by cook by vibe. But these ones are more like five to six simple steps because so much of it's already done for you. And it occurred to me that if you think that you don't know how to cook, this is actually exactly where you should start. I learned to cook and the best of the best will tell you the same thing, that you learn to cook by starting with simple and basic things, following basic instructions by someone who knows what they're doing. You're not just born knowing how to cook, you have to try. So you'll experience this with Green Chef. You'll walk away being like, oh, okay, I now know how to oven roast some chicken or how to cook shrimp properly. Like you will learn some skills with these kids at the same time. And I am sure you'll learn everything from some cooking methods to like ideas for pairing ingredients so it's super valuable for you girls who are turned off about cooking new types of meals and when it comes to the concern of how do i know i'm eating enough and that's something that green chef is great for they send you a full balanced meal and it always has a healthy serve of protein carbs and fat that i love (laughs) i love that there's always some kind of tasty sauce that i would never really think to add for myself it's fun it's funner than cooking for yourself sometimes so another thing i really like is that you get the exact amount of food that you need which i mentioned before but this is about waste reduction right now side note i am obsessed with zero waste when it comes to food i love to compost and i try my very best to never throw anything out so if you're a food waster green chef is for you Also, over the years, I've gotten meals from various meal prep companies and the packaging is always insane. Cardboard boxes inside of cardboard boxes with ice packs and plastic wrap. Yes, Green Jeff does have some packaging, but I love how it all comes with recycling instructions. And some of the packaging, they even supply return instructions. That's a huge win for me. And when the food arrived, it wasn't in copious amounts of plastic, foam, and cardboard. They really use the minimum amount needed to ship, which is awesome. Okay, coming back really quick to the nutrition conversation here. This is one of the main reasons I wanted Green Chef to sponsor the show. You do not need to only eat fast food and junk to get your period back. And those of us are like those of us that believe in this we'll die on this hill (laughs) so many of us are not getting the variety and joy from our food that we need we're just eating whatever and that's also why we're in this situation yes you can get your period back by eating a surplus of calories but don't you also want to feel good so look i love a good water burger as much as the next girl but you have to get those veggies. You have to get those whole foods and quality proteins. That is why I'm pumped to offer this potential solution for you. So they also have vegan and vegetarian recipes. I know many of you are determined to stick with your plant-based. All good. All good with me. And that also includes recipes for paleo and keto, which means, honestly, it just means like if you, you get to switch it up every single week. Because I know what you're thinking. Keto for hypothalamic amenorrhea? Uh, No, and I would agree. But I did get the keto box and I added a side of rice to the boom boom shrimp bowl and rice also to the creamy lemon chicken and like a burger bun to the pork patties and voila. Like it's so easy to just add something to any of them. So you, you don't even have to worry about that. If those things aren't important to you, you can get just whatever sounds good. So if Green Chef sounds like exactly what you need, head to greenchef.com forward slash HAP90 and use the code HAP90 at checkout and get $90 off and free delivery, free shipping. You can save tons of money on food, tons of time in the kitchen and tons of stress. So enjoy. Hey everyone. Welcome to the HA podcast. It's an exciting day because everyone's favorite, I don't know, what do you call it, like bonus guest host, 
Megan doll <gasps> is here. You just call me Megan. Is that <laughs> is that so gross? No, it just no, today no one calls me. Me- you can be Megan and I'll be Danielle. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Our like alter egos. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So we're doing a Q&A today, which is our favorite thing to do. I posted on the Instagram earlier this morning, was like, what do y'all want to know? We've got some really good questions too, actually, not just like the standard, like, when will I know that it's coming? Or just like, I don't. Yeah. Or like, do I actually have to eat 2,500 calories? Isn't it funny <laughs> how we just get just like, no. We, have- we, know, we know the usual questions. Trust us. <laughs> right. So we've gotten some sub- some real substantial ones here today. So Sweet. we're going to kick off. Meg hasn't even seen them in advance. So I'm just going to totally like. Like biting my nails gonna, over here. Spitball. Okay. How do you not lose hope when you get constant signs of a period, but it won't come? Mm-hmm. Dude, like straight up. That's why you don't lose hope. Like I could maybe more understand if you were feeling down because you saw nothing. Yes, absolutely. I feel like the signs should be like giving you so much hope and trust and belief that you're doing exactly what you need to be doing, but you just need to pour some more time into your journey and I think we get questions like this a lot about women getting like impatient with their journey. And I get so fired up about this because it's like, you know, we do live in a world where we just like want everything so quickly and so instantly, but healing journeys are not that way. And we really have to just practice such like compassion towards our bodies and be super patient. Totally. This question is actually from Danielle. She's my home girl inside of the HA Society. So I know a bit about you. And dude, but really everyone, if you're seeing like cervical mucus, if you're seeing, you know, signs of like your skin changing in a way that is like hormonal and you haven't seen before, if you're experiencing breast tenderness, all of these things, like they're real symptoms. There's no, they don't mean nothing. They're not like happening due to nothing. There's not this like other process in our body that's doing those things as well for no reason. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I think we sometimes just get into a denial that like, well, this isn't going to work for me. And I mean, I've seen it time and time and time again with this exact stage that you're at where you're like I'm not seeing progress that's when you're like about to see progress yeah I'm so excited for her because she definitely it's coming it's closer than it's ever been before and that's like the cool thing right to think of it that way rather than getting frustrated like okay I'm getting all these signs it's not coming What if you just thought that you're like one cycle closer to getting it now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're one follicular wave. You're one rise and fall in estrogen closer. Yeah, you got to like allow your body to figure some stuff out. Like give it some space to do some some good work. Love it. Okay. Rachel asks, I love this question for you too. I'm super curious. At what point in your recovery did you feel ready to coach others? Because I know you do work with girls that are missing their periods. So that's a really good question. Yeah. So I actually, so I started working as a registered holistic nutritionist like way back in 2014. And I did at the time, like I've, because of my history with eating disorders, And when I started working as a nutritionist, obviously I wasn't dealing with an eating disorder anymore. So I was actually helping women overcome their eating disorders through my coaching practice. And a lot of the times they did not have a period and I was able to help them get their period back through the coaching that I did. But it obviously took me years to 
just kind of come to terms that like, okay, I'm, I'm not getting my period and I need to address this myself. But when you look at my HA recovery journey, so I started in August of 2018 and I was really open about my journey, about like what I was going through, about kind of what I was eating and how that was changing and how my body was changing and how I was accepting it in a whole new way. But I wasn't like talking on my podcast about, okay, this is what you have to do and this is how you do it. I wasn't really stepping into that authority position or like the expert position, you know, because I wasn't, I was going through the journey myself. Um, And I really didn't, and you'll notice this, what, like, if you look at my podcast episodes, when I was going through HA recovery, I was interviewing other people about how they overcame HA. And I was just simply sharing like about my journey. And it wasn't until after I recovered that I was actually sharing more of like the, okay, this is what you do. This is how you do it, et cetera. For me, um, well, like the first thing that's important to note is like I don't help assess or recommend things nutritionally. Like that's just not something that I do. And I like pushed back on coaching for a little bit just because I was like, well, that's just like not what I do. That's not my expertise, you know. Um, I know a lot about nutrition and I do work in that industry but that doesn't mean anything. So what became apparent to me was just like the the one gap that I saw, which was that's like getting help nutritionally and like that's not all anyone, like everyone needs. And Mm -hmm. it can be really expensive to work with a practitioner. And there is like, you could totally go to your practitioner and get a really great protocol, but they don't necessarily work with you every single week, helping you stick to it and just like work through the, um, you know, the mental struggles and just like having someone there to help be like, yeah, like let's find some ideas on how sticking to this protocol can be easier. And so I feel like an ally to health professionals in a way where it's like, okay, you want your client to, you know, take these things and do these things and make these lifestyle changes. But when But, you know, you as a practitioner might only be in a situation where you can give them that protocol and then you'll see them in six weeks. So, like, I want to help someone execute on their plan. Mm -hmm. And so I realized when I was getting like having conversations and inquiries with people where they were just like, I know I need to do this. I know what I need to do. I just can't do it. I was like, oh, well, Mm -hmm. that's where I feel like I can provide value, whether it's just being like a sounding board. I certainly definitely know enough about lifestyle and behavior change. That's the industry I've been in for quite a while now. And so I just wanted to apply that and just be be a support and be able to help people stick to their plan. So I realized probably like two years after um, going all in and everything, but getting my first period, I would say it was about a year or so because of this podcast and all of the stuff that I was making. um, I just knew when there was, when I was after having enough conversations with people and seeing where I was successfully helping people. And so that would be my recommendation is like, well, get out there, have conversations see what value you're providing and if you feel like I you know you don't have helpful things to provide them yet because maybe you're still going through that that's okay now you know what you want to go and find out about but once you feel like you're successfully showing up for people and they're you know making progress in some way with you then maybe that's when you know that you're ready Okay. Perfect. I love that you're kind of like everyone's HA recovery cheerleader, Danny. That's how I feel. You come in and I feel like you do such a amazing job at that because like you said, 
the people that are working with a health practitioner, like whether that's a nutritionist or whatever, it seems like most women who are going through HA recovery will like find some type of nutritionist of some type um, to work with because they're just kind of like, I need to figure out what I need to eat, (laughs) right? After so many years of restricting. But like you said, they're not going to be seeing their nutritionist every single day or even every single week. And they know what to do, but it's kind of like just having Danny cheerleading (laughs) them along. And yeah, I love what you do and how you're doing it. it It definitely feels more like life coaching in a way. And we always end up just talking about not HA, right? It's like we always end up yeah. talking about like, okay, how can we bring more joy into your life? Oh, I noticed you've brought like wanting to start a business up a couple of times. Let's talk about like what is in like what that is and unpack that together. Your nutritionist is not going to do that with you. Yeah. And that's also why I don't do any more mm-hmm. nutrition coaching. Like I literally don't. So I am a registered holistic nutritionist, but I'm also a certified spiritual coach. And that's the type of work I do now. I help my clients get to the root of their food issues, their body image issues, that sort of thing. Because like you said, people know what to do, right? And after I was recovered from HA, I kind of, obviously I played with the idea of, okay, should I create like an HA recovery course or something like that? But like when I was going through HA, did I do an HA recovery course? No, because I knew what to do. Mm. I didn't need to invest in a course to learn that I needed to eat more and exercise less. The women listening to this podcast don't need to know that. They already know that. Basically, anyone who is going through HA recovery already knows what they need to do. But sometimes it's like the fear of body changes or the fear of just eating more because of these like child, and I'm going to say traumas here, Mm -hmm. right? But like when I say trauma, it's not really like what we typically think of when we hear the word trauma, but essentially like a trauma is just anything that like impacts you, like it's like this big impact on your life. So I'll maybe I'll use that word instead. So childhood impacts, like we experience these different events throughout childhood, and we form these misunderstandings. And those carry into adulthood and can prevent us from nourishing our bodies properly, accepting our bodies at like, potentially a bigger size. And that's what I help my clients do because that's the important stuff. It's not about the food. It's not about exercising less. It's being okay with all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are like some HA courses out there that people can do. I think a lot, that's really great, especially if you've just found out about HA and it's like okay we're starting at square one here but after that like you're fucking digging into who you are as a person and what's holding you back and what stories you have and beliefs you've brought from your childhood and so it's just important to have someone to talk to um Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and like find just find the person that 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 feels right for you and like there's so many like if you have HA you could just you could totally hire a life coach or a therapist and it would help you immensely well that's what I did Mm. like I didn't hire a nutritionist I literally hired a therapist because I just was like I know there's a HA recovery is like this beautiful time to really dive into like true healing and I think it's a perfect time to work with someone like a therapist or someone that does similar work, right? Anything that has to do with like helping you move through some childhood stuff and letting go of that. I help my clients do like um, inner child healing and compassionate reparenting. So anything like that 
I really do believe that like take advantage of this time to sure nutritionists are great obviously and they might really help you through your HA journey but most of the time that's probably not what you need because I think most women who find themselves in this space they already know so much about food so it's like yeah a lot of the times you don't really need someone to tell you how to eat but it's like you need someone to guide you along the journey um, of releasing those beliefs that you have around food and your body. Mm-hmm. And with that point of like, you kind of know what to eat. A lot of people are listening saying, dude, I don't know what to eat. <laughs> this is like, that's common, right? But when you have someone just help ask you the right questions, you can mm-hmm. figure it out. Like if we sat here and we went, okay, Meg, you don't know what to eat. Well, what are you eating right now? what do you think is missing from that meal? Or like, what do you think could make that meal better? And like, you'll figure it out. It just helps to talk to the right person for that. Yeah, Yeah. I so agree with that. Love it. All right, come work with me or Meg. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Next question. This is like a long one. So strap in. I have two long ones. Buckle up. Lacey, I would love to know thoughts on intuitive eating during the recovery process. I know the recommended calories is 2,500, but wondering if it's possible to recover with listening to your body. Of course, eating more, but stopping when satisfied. I personally am struggling with the intentional stuffing yourself to meet the minimum, and I don't really want to track my calories because I feel like it triggers old behaviors for me. Giving up my fitness power was a huge deal. So she just wants to know thoughts on, like, how do we summarize that as a question? She wants to know thoughts on using intuitive eating when I guess you're really used to tracking. Yeah. And how to kind of meet those minimums without tracking, but she also kind of has an issue with eating a lot of food if she's not hungry for it. It sounds like, Mm -hmm. you know, stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. From the question? I do. Yeah. Okay. So I actually think it's really cool that we got a question about intuitive eating because I literally just had this thought last night, like literally last night about intuitive eating. And I was going to record a podcast episode on my show about my thoughts on intuitive eating. But since we're here, I'll just send you the recording. We'll just talk about it. So I think with intuitive eating, And I would love to just like jam out with you on this. But I think with intuitive eating, a lot of people think that, well, if I'm not hungry, I don't need to eat, right? Because that's not really like intuitive of me. I know I was, I thought that Mm -hmm. for a really long time. I, I was so kind of envious of people who ate intuitively because looking at them, it seemed like, They could just eat and stop whenever they want and they could get their period. But I was doing that and I was unintentionally under eating for years. Okay. So, what if we kind of push the term intuitive eating aside for a moment? And what if we looked at this thing called mindful eating? I think it holds like a totally different vibe versus like intuitive versus mindful. If you don't have your period, we have to be mindful Mm. of how much food we're eating. We have to be mindful that we are eating enough food. And if we let go of the fact that like intuitive eating is like kind of like the holy grail of how we need to eat, right? We can just like let that go. And I think if you are maybe eating more than you're hungry for through like this mindful eating approach, it might feel better for you. Not sure your thoughts on that, but I like, I personally really love the vibe of mindful eating versus intuitive eating because it kind of releases that feeling for me that I need to stop when I'm like not hungry anymore. And then mindful eating brings in this vibe that like, okay, I know I need to eat this much food, 
And mindful eating allows me to do that because I'm being mindful of what my body actually needs right now to function properly. I had never thought of it that way. And I really like it. Like it's sinking into me that there's this feeling around intuitive eating. A lot of people feel bad because they like, quote unquote, don't know how. And they like can't trust their intuition and they kind of feel like they're failing at that and they need to be super good at intuitive eating. Whereas yeah. to, it's this whole other thing. It's a whole thing. And the mind saying like mindful eating, especially when you're going through AJ recovery and you your hunger cues are out of whack and you're sort of struggling with this old belief system that you had that's really making you question every decision that you make. I love the idea of of being mindful because that that to me says you know you're asking yourself the right questions I guess every Mm -hmm. time you're sitting down to a meal or every time you feel hunger and you're like okay well you're not so much trusting your intuition as you are motivationally interviewing yourself and being like well what could this mean and where are you trying to go you know the direction you're trying to go is to get a period okay well what would help that right now listening to this hunger cue word versus intuitive eating of like well is this my body saying it's hungry or am I really just thirsty or whatever else people are thinking I think it's really interesting I like that and actually just hearing you kind of talk that out it jogged my memory about something that I did throughout HA recovery because again like intuitive eating, like we all kind of want to just be intuitive eaters, right? We want to have this healthy relationship with food, eat when we're hungry, stop when we're full, that sort of thing. But something that really helped me when I was moving through HA recovery was getting super clear on my goal. And this is what I have my clients do as soon as we start working together, because so often I see and I've I noticed this in my own life like years ago is we have this goal, but what we're doing isn't like actually aligned with the goal, Uh right? And so something that I constantly asked myself throughout HA recovery, if that desire to eat intuitively popped up, I was like, okay, but is my end goal right now to eat intuitively? Like overall, is that the goal right now? No. The goal, the end goal was to get my period back. Intuitive eating can wait. Yeah. Like I don't have to be an intuitive eater right now. Mm. And that's okay. And like kind of giving yourself permission to put things like that aside and be like, that can actually wait right now. My goal right now is to get my period back. That's so what? Yeah. So what do I need to do in order to get my period back? And I think... That brings us to the next kind of part of her question is, okay, how do I actually eat enough food without tracking my calories? Okay. So you can start with this one if you want. Well, real quick, the thing that comes to my mind here is you don't have to necessarily be like stuffing yourself or reaching a specific amount of food to be I had this thought so set in my head and then like the way I was going to say it and then it went away you don't have to like stuff your face and feel uncomfortable to be doing a really good job at releasing yourself of restriction and stress right a lot for a lot of people seriously I know this is just anecdotal, but a lot of people have seen huge progress, aka getting their period, when they finally, you know, cut that little tiny thing that they were holding onto, which is like tracking or which is still Elise, if she if you're listening, so proud of you, um, in the group. She has been she had been holding on to just doing yoga and walks, which all like everyone listening is like, yeah, that's like nothing. But she finally just let it go, like this need to do a so certain amount of, of that every week. And she got her period. It's like a lot of it can be, you know, let, letting go. And in real life, you don't eat the same amount of food every day. So mm-hmm. if you're in recovery and you eat 
like 1800 calories today but 3000 tomorrow or something like that like that ebb and flow is natural and as long as you're doing your freaking best building your plates in a way that is like nutrient dense af and removing this feeling of restriction and obsessive tracking, I think that's way more effective than forcing yourself to eat a certain amount of food because there's, there's stress around that. I couldn't agree more, honestly. And for Lacey, that's who wrote in this mm-hmm. question, right? We already know that tracking is going to be a stress for her. She already said Deleting my fitness pal was such a huge deal for me. Way to go, sister. I'm so proud of you because I know what a huge deal that is. It's a huge deal. So many people aren't even able to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think there's definitely a way. I love that you said just like sit down, make your plates super nutrient dense to the point that like you are so sure that there is enough on that plate. And something that like all the girls can do if they're moving through HA recovery and they're kind of playing with the idea of like, "Uh, am I eating enough? If you are questioning whether or not you're eating enough, add more. So really. Right? And and I, I heard that concept before I started my HA recovery journey. Like, you know, if you don't know how, like if you don't know if you're eating enough, then add more. And I didn't really get it at first. But then once I started HA recovery, I was like, Oh, now I get it. Like if I if I don't know if what's on my plate is enough food, I should add more until I'm like, positive. And another thing that they could do is just think like, okay, would Danny and Meg approve of this meal? (laughs) Dude, I love it. What would Danny and Meg do? That's a great question for you guys. We'll make bracelets. Would they be okay with this meal or would they tell me to eat more? Mm-hmm. Little picture of our faces, like looking. <laughs> I love it. Okay, great. I feel like we crushed that question. Do you? Yeah. Amazing. Elisa or Alyssa, maybe. I would love mm-hmm. to hear some and this might be similar so we could just do the second part if necessary i would love to hear some practical tips on how to deal with messed up hunger signals when trying to eat regularly and intuitively we covered that i tend to either not be hungry at all when i start eating i can't stop and i feel out of control i don't really want to count calories and track and play my meals anymore since it's so difficult to stop counting okay that's like an identical question but there's a second part Secondly, I'd love to get some ideas on how much of the recovery details and exact, like, and exactly how to share it with your partner. I want him to take part in it, but I don't want to overwhelm him with the very extreme difficulties, like unlogical food fears, mood swings due to body image. So basically, I'm going through a lot of stuff my husband does like not get, or my partner just couldn't relate to it would be really hard to show um like compassion and empathy because this is such like a female specific if you have a male spouse um situation and yeah I get that I really like this question um well you and I both had partners Mm -hmm. romantic partners while going through HA so Perfect. I love this question. And something that I did, I mean, the whole like emotional roller coaster and the body changes and all that stuff, whether you think it's like too complicated or kind of like too over the top for your partner to know about it, they're going to be a part of it, right? Like whether you like really share it fully with them or not, they're going to be part of they're living with you, I'm assuming, (laughs) and or they're going to be seeing you often. So they're going to be around you as your body is changing. And I actually interviewed Scott, my boyfriend on my podcast. So we talk about what it was like 
while I was going through HA recovery and like what it was like for him. And he says like, I, I truly did not even <laughs> like notice your body changing. Right. Yeah. It wasn't until after that I was like, come on, you have to notice. And he was like, well, now I do. But like, as it was happening, I really, I had no idea that you were gaining like the weight that you did type thing. But something that I would recommend, I found a article online and it, I mean, there's so many blog posts about HA and I just said it would be really important for, to me, if you read this, just so they knew like what it was, like why I didn't have a period and why I was approaching it in the way that I did. You know, you could send your partner a podcast episode to listen to, but I just thought it would be like easier. Like here's a link to a blog post read it just so you kind of understand. And he did. And I think that really helped. Yeah. Nice. I mean, honestly, for me, my husband's just amazing. And I should just interview him because you really should. I could just be um dudes, make him get on the show. Go find him at Code Red Panda and tell him can you please interview on your wife's podcast? <laughs> um, he just really showed up. He's like so naturally gentle and caring and selfless. And he's just such, he he really needs to care more about himself over others sometimes. And I can learn a lot from his ability to show up for other people and make space for what they're going through. All I really had to do with him was say tell him what was going on um and tell him how I needed him to show up when I was having bad days so it's like there's gonna be yeah. bad times dude I'm gonna be gaining weight I'm gonna get upset I'm gonna want to work out and here's what I need from you whether it's like accountability to re- remind myself um whether I like maybe there was a time where I, I wanted him to comment if he felt like I didn't have it like wasn't eating enough food or like maybe caught me trying to not eat breakfast or something like that that makes it sound like I'm like I have things that I'm trying to hide that's not the case I just have um and many of us do just tendencies to err towards eating less than more and so I just needed his help to spot that Mm -hmm. and um yeah I just like I just want him to not to tell me oh, everything's okay. And like, no, you actually look great. And I didn't, I don't need that because I can do that for myself. Just in the moment, I just need him to like, give me a hug and not tell me like, oh, well, you don't have to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. I am super pumped about this question, honestly. So can I just like chime in a little bit more here? I love, I love what you said about um, having him kind of like call you out Mm. if it looked like you weren't eating enough food. And I love that like you had him for that. And I think a lot of other women have partners that could do that for them. I know one of my best friends, she told me while she was working to get her period back, her husband would like constantly comment on her plate and just like, hey, I don't think that's enough food. And I just thought that was like one of the most loving things like your partner could do for you. I was like, that is amazing. I did not have Scott do that for me because the guy like doesn't eat. Like He like goes all day without eating. And then basically like he's the type of guy that, doesn't know what like a normal yeah he wouldn't be good at this job no so he was not good so I didn't ask him to do that but what I did ask him to do was not comment on my body Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think that's a super important boundary to set not only with like your partner but I also set that boundary with my mom and dad they would tell me like how great I looked And that was like, I just didn't want to hear it. I just didn't want to hear anything about my body. And so I just told them, hey, guys, I so appreciate you 
like being so supportive of me. And I know when you tell me that I look so great and healthy and you're so happy for me, I know that's coming from a place of love and support. But to me, in my mind, that makes me like hyper focused on my body. And that's not supportive. So if you can just like not comment on my body and they just stopped and it was the best thing. So you actually can set boundaries around like how people comment on your body or if they do at all. Yeah. Dude, comments on my body have are some of the small, like the, the traumas that I have, just very yeah. specific memories reason to not and not just on my body but on other people's bodies right for me if if you said something about another woman's body that you like I would immediately think of all of the things or all of the ways I don't have that I would compare myself I have friends who have been like I just love how that girl's like something something is so something um and not saying any of that shit on this podcast but I and I was just like well that's not what I look like so yes this means something about me and that it was just that was just so hard for me and I really struggled with that so yeah having that boundary of not making comments on the body is so flipping important and you reminded me one thing I did have is no comments on um I was like he was only allowed to make a comment that I was like if he truly felt like I was avoiding eating food, no comments are allowed to be made on like, if I go and have seconds, I don't want him to say like, Oh, good job. Or anything like that. (laughs) No, 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 no. If I want to have seconds, I need it to be. So I had this experience just last night where I needed to go get seconds because, and as well, like, by the time this airs, everyone will know. So I'm pregnant, Meg knows. And I um, was Meg fucking Kelly. hungry, Meg knows. She already knows, so, <laughs> so she's cool. But um, yeah, I was like hungry again. And, and I'm like more than ever, because this is not about me anymore. I was like, well, I'm eating some food just in case. Um, and I was like, I sat down and Jake was like, oh, that – you were really quick. What did you get? So he's just like so shocked at how fast I was going in and out. And, but like, I had this reaction to like needing to tell him what was in my bowl. And I almost, I call myself like about to lie, like about to leave some information out about what was in my bowl. Interesting. It was super interesting. And I caught myself and I told him exactly what was in my bowl. And we moved on with our life. Like he was just curious how I was so fast. Cause usually like it was just like normal conversation, right? Yeah. Like usually desserts just a multi-step process for me. Like you, you know, our yogurt bowls, those take time yeah. to assemble. And I, yes. but I made like half of one, you know, it had like yogurt, peanut butter and honey. Like it didn't have the berries. And so I was just like, boom, boom, boom. And I just had this whole like freaking story about what it meant that Jake was like, wanted to know what was in my bowl, like why I was so fast, which was like irrelevant to how much I'm eating. So anyway, I'm still struggling with that. We still, I still have to remind him sometimes, like if I go and have seconds and you say anything about it, it's really hard for me to like eat that without putting morality behind it. So mm-hmm. just communication. <laughs> communication is queen. Yeah. <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot that happened last night. It's so strange. Oh my he seems so great. He is the best. I can't wait till he's on the podcast. <sighs> yeah, we'll get him on. He's just like, I tried to get him on one time. And he like, he just needs so much preparation. Me and you would be like, oh yeah, sure. Like, let's just do it. No, Scott did too. He needed all of the, <laughs> the, the same questions. Person, he needed, yeah, I swear they are. He needed all the questions typed out. <laughs> And I'll just be super transparent. When we recorded the podcast episode, we tried to record (laughs) standing in the same or like seated seated at the same mic, like in my office where I am right now recording this show. And he 
just like I joke and I say he turned into like Chandler Bing like he like couldn't talk he wasn't I was just like what What is up with you and so what happened was I sent him over to his office so like a different room and we were able to record the podcast episode in two different rooms no fucking way that is too funny I think (laughs) I think Jake would be exactly the same I think they're super similar and I forgot you guys are obsessed with formula one as well yes yeah, that's like I didn't even realize this about Meg. I have not met any other couples like that. And then of all of the people in the world that are just like also Team Red Bull, everyone loves Max Verstappen. It's Meg. Yes, I love Max. I love Max. Yeah, so, so crazy. crazy. We're gonna have. Yeah, to go. we're gonna have to go. Also, Simona, she's in the AJ Society. She lives in Monza. So I'm thinking oh my that we'll all go to the Italian Grand Prix. We'll stay with her. Well, I'm sure we've got someone over in Germany. We'll stay with like Julia or someone like that. Oh, Montreal. We could. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a fair way. I have family there. Do you really? Yes. Too easy. Not my favorite track. I have been to that one. Not my favorite. Oh, my God. We'll have like a third podcast. F1 ladies talk. (laughs) So niche. It's niche and I like it. It is. It is. (sighs) <sighs> love it now we're out of time for a question so sorry everyone <laughs> we're out of time for questions <laughs> yes because i have a call right at four and i don't want to risk Perfect. us going over but no we won't will you tell everyone where they can hang out with you if they don't already know which i'm sure they do but. yeah of course well thanks for having me again danny this was fun and you can find me over on instagram at i am Meg Doll. And my podcast is the Unbreakable You podcast. So good. Danny's been on it a bunch, like a whole month straight. <laughs> um, literally like four weeks in a row. And yeah, my website is Megdoll.com. Hell yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. Everyone have an amazing day. I'll see you on another day on the internet. Thank you so much for listening today, guys. Please subscribe to the podcast. And if you could head to iTunes specifically and leave a rating or review, that would help so much because it makes it easier for other people with HA who are Googling around to find the podcast really easily. So if you do that, you're doing a service to all of the women. Check out the latest footwear innovation from Adidas, the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, which features carbon fiber energy rods that are both lightweight and precisely tuned for a more anatomical transition. Everything from the ultra light polyester upper to the re sculpted midsole and the reinvented outsoles are designed for speed. Visit adidas.com to learn more today. Hear that? Is that America cheering or a sausage patty? sizzling to perfection it's time to cheer for egg mcmuffin and fresh cracked eggs at mcdonald's it's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest to goodness morning meal breakfast it's on at mcdonald's now enjoy a large iced coffee for just two bucks and a breakfast sandwich to make a meal prices and participation may vary cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal